What's up you guys, I'm Eric and welcome back to my channel, No, You Grow Up. In today's video I'm finally going to get around to talking about the G.I. Joe Classified Collection. So I recently posted a video talking about why I was collecting G.I. Joe Classified the way I was. So it had actually gotten to the point where it was either my third or fourth biggest collection, I can't remember right offhand. In this video I'm going to talk about kind of my history with G.I. Joe and how I ended up getting into the Classified Collection and why I just ended up going so nuts on it. So when I was a kid, I went to a babysitter, and there was two things that were super hyped there, Ninja Turtles and G.I. Joe. I definitely always liked Ninja Turtles way more, but I can easily say that G.I. Joe was probably my number two favorite franchise for the majority of the years where Ninja Turtles was my favorite franchise. I had a ton of Joes, most of them were the later release figures, again I was born in 87 so I wasn't really there for the hype of G.I. Joe, I kind of got in at the tail end and when I went to the babysitter I was the youngest kid there so most of the kids were older, actually all the kids were older than me so they were into some of those earlier 80's brands. So since I wasn't old enough to watch it when it was actually on TV, the one thing that I did have was the Mass Device VHS, and I watched that thing 10 million times. The majority of Joe figures that I had were later release figures, so I hate to say it, but some of my favorite sublines were like Ninja Force, and I know those are ones that everybody hates, but again, I love Ninja Turtles, I love Ninja stuff, Snake Eyes was my favorite character, because again, I'm just super cliche like that. And my favorite figure that I actually had was Dice from the pair Slice and Dice. I never actually had Slice, Pat did, which was cool, because then when we had them together, we did have Slice. And dice and those two are probably some of my most anticipated figures to come in the GI Joe classified line for sure I had a lot of the vehicles and stuff and the biggest one that I had was I'm pretty sure it was the hammerhead and if you remember back around that time if you remember watching look who's talking to they actually played the real commercial in that movie and the two babies fought about it because he wanted it and he said it was a boy toy and I always thought it was really cool that I actually had that vehicle that was in the movie so I do have a lot of fondness for GI Joe as an adult I kind of accidentally stumbled across Classified. I really hadn't even started collecting modern figures at the time. I was still mostly collecting Lego and that's the reason I was actually at Walmart that day. I was there looking for some Lego stuff and I happened to see an MCAP and it was brand new. There wasn't any figures that were taken out of it and it was the G.I. Joe Classified series. I wasn't in the loop. I wasn't watching action figure YouTube at the time so I had no idea that these figures were coming out. And of course, the first two figures that popped out to me were Snake Eyes and Destro. So up to this point, the only modern action figures that I had were NECA Ninja Turtles, and then I actually had a couple War for Cybertron Transformers as well. But just seeing these figures got me really excited, and I'm like, you know what? I really like Snake Eyes, I really like Destro, I'm gonna grab both these guys. And that's kind of where it all got kicked off. I went back two days later, and I was going to get the rest of the set, and I had no idea what was about to go on with these figures so by the time I got back there was two roadblocks left in the case and that was it so I grabbed one of those so at that point I had three of the first five figures so a few days later my target ended up getting their stock in and that's when I got Duke and Scarlet so I had that whole first wave and from there I was all in on that line I've always had pretty good luck with finding things as of late it hasn't been the best but Early on in my collecting days, I was going to Walmart pretty much every day. I was going to Target pretty much every day. So by the time that Wave 2 hit, I was a little bit more into action figures. I would started picking up Marvel Legends. I was getting a lot of War for Cybertron Transformers figures at the time. So again, I was spending a lot more time in the toy aisle. So I happened to catch the next wave when I hit the store too. So I grabbed all three of those figures. And I didn't get more than one Red Ninja because at the time, I didn't plan on really being an army builder for any line period. Not for Turtles, not for G.I. Joe, not for anything, but that would quickly change. Even when it came to the Cobra Island figures, the only figures that I never saw in store were the Baroness and the Beachhead. I did end up getting those when Target put those all up for pre-order like the next summer or whatever. Other than that, I pretty much got all the Cobra Island figures. I even got the Viper the day that it came out. I remember back then they were actually showing the release date and you could go to Target and it wasn't on the shelf and that was one of the few times I ever actually asked an employee and they did go to the back and get it for me and that was just an awesome feeling to score that first Viper. And then after that it's kind of when my luck really started to improve with things. I actually ended up going to another Target store and they had just put out their entire Viper wave and I about shit when I first saw that. I couldn't believe that I actually saw six Vipers sitting on the shelves. If you can remember back at the time, that figure was just super hot. He was going for like a hundred bucks a pop at the time. So I ended up grabbing three more and that's when my army building really started. I had four Vipers and I just liked the way it looked so much. 
I didn't plan on army building for anything outside of Ninja Turtles at the time because at that time I did start getting more foot soldiers and stuff. Again, I had no intentions of army building with this line, but it just kind of became a slippery slope. So I started doing it with all the figures and four was kind of the magic number that I was going for with all my army builders. So I ended up getting four Cobra Infantry, four Cobra Troopers, I had four Vipers, I had four Bats, I had four Alley Vipers. I'm lucky enough to have the kind of job where when pre-orders are coming up, I just need to talk to my boss and be like, hey, can I take five minutes to just lock myself in my office and try to get these, and he's pretty much always cool with it. So with my ease of access to the computer at all times, I've never really had any trouble getting any Hasbro Pulse exclusives, I've never had any trouble getting any of the Comic-Con exclusives. I've had really good luck and ease with collecting this line. And I feel like that's what really did it for me. It's the fact that I knew so many people were having so much trouble getting these figures. And I'm not just going to say it's the hype. Because again, I think this is the best line that Hasbro is putting out in the 6 inch scale. You know, everybody else was having all this trouble collecting this line. And for me, it pretty much all just fell into my lap. I didn't even know this line was coming out. I just happened to stumble across it. And then from there, I just had really good luck. The entire time I was collecting this line, in the back of my head, it's the one line that I was always kind of second guessing myself with too. I know I like G.I. Joe, but again, I just don't know why it was just such a big collection and why I was giving it so much real estate. Before I started selling everything off, I had five shelves and three cubes all dedicated to G.I. Joe. It had the second most real estate out of anything other than Turtles. Not only was I pretty much all in on classified, but I also had the entire Walmart 3 and 3 quarter wave as well. So the thing that kind of got me to my breaking point was just the volume at which Hasbro has been putting out their figures lately. It's very clear that when the Hell Charger didn't fund that it kind of sent them into a panic and they just started releasing all these pre-orders that some of them should have came out next year in like May. It's one thing for figures to hit a month or two early, but when I have five months of pre-orders lined up and they all just start hitting at once, there was no way that was going to be sustainable. It got to the point where Hasbro made me cancel pretty much every single pre-order that wasn't an exclusive because I just had no idea when stuff was going to hit and I don't just sit on the kind of funds where I can afford to buy every single thing that I have pre-ordered all at once. I've kept a spreadsheet going the entire time I've been collecting so that way I can stay on top of things and I never have anything sneak up on me. I'm always aware when stuff's going to hit and when you can't depend on that it just really throws things off. So it basically kind of came down to the point where they were choking me with X-Men figures, G.I. Joe figures, and there was still two waves of Super 7 TMNT figures that I didn't have in hand yet that I wanted way more than all these figures that I was actually buying. So for me it's pretty much just came down to priority. Turtles is definitely my priority. It's always going to have the lion's share of everything in here. Even if it gets to the point where Turtles is half my room, I'm okay with that because again, it brings me the most joy, it's what I'm the happiest collecting, talking about, just doing everything with. Turtles makes me the happiest, it's far and away my front runner. After that, X-Men is definitely my strong number two and whenever I say X-Men I pretty much just mean like the X-Book universe. Like I love X-Force, I love X-Factor, I love all those comic runs, they're all fucking amazing. I have two buddies that I grew up with that I've been reconnecting with and I've been talking to so much about this stuff and it really has just rekindled my love for X-Men and it was always a strong number two in my adult collecting but just talking with those guys has just really brought back all those memories and just really reminded me how awesome that era was in my life. So after X-Men there's kind of a steep fall off in my favorite brands and I would say that Power Rangers is probably on the top of that heap. The main reason I love Power Rangers so much right now is because of the Boom Comics. I love that run. It's just amazing. If you haven't read any of that stuff go check it out and honestly as crazy as it sounds after Power Rangers my next favorite thing to collect is probably Motu Origins. And I know that sounds crazy because I don't really have any childhood connection to Motu, but it's just far and away the funnest action figure line in the boys toy aisle right now. And I'm definitely going to have a video coming about that line as well. So with Power Rangers I'm pretty much all the way there. I have everything that I pretty much want unless they put out more boom figures. We still need Squat and Babu. I think any of the monsters they put out I'll probably go in on as well. And even with Motu Origins I'm starting to fall a little bit behind in pre-orders and that's okay because I'm not all in on that line anyway. I do have the majority of the figures 
but I do pretty much just cherry pick that line. I'm kind of just sticking to the classic figures. I'm not really in on any of the Sunman figures. I'm kind of getting away from all the variants and stuff like that too. So the things that kind of just came to the chopping block for me were G.I. Joe's and Transformers. And I really wasn't collecting Transformers anymore. I was kind of happy with where that collection was. I sold 90% of my Transformers and I don't miss them. I kept seven figures. And even though seven figures are enough to just remind me of that franchise, and I don't need four shelves dedicated to Transformers to make me happy. With G.I. Joe Classified, I didn't want to go to that extreme. I didn't want to get rid of everything. So from this point, I'm just going to collect the definitive version of each of the Joes, the definitive version for each of the Cobras. I'm going to keep all five of the figures from the first wave because that is just kind of special to me. That's kind of just something that got me back into the action figure aisle so those five figures will always be special to me even if I don't display them I'm gonna hang on to them because again I'm only gonna leave room for pretty much one version of each Joe and that's all I'm gonna have room for now same with Cobra I'm just gonna have one version of each of the characters even the army builders and I'm okay with that I'm going from having five shelves and three cubes packed with Joe's to just two Joe shelves I like my collection even more now because I have more stuff I can get over here. I could get my Motu stuff in a better position and again, that makes me happier than Joe does right now, so I was glad to give it that real estate. And with all that being said, I think that G.I. Joe Classified is the best brand that Hasbro has right now. I think the figures are the best sculpts, I think they have the best paint apps, I think they have the least amount of QC issues and they come with far and away the most accessories and that all those things just make for awesome action figures. But going forward, I'm just going to be cherry picking my Joes and again, it's going to come after I have the Turtles I want and after I have the X-Men figures that I want. G.I. Joe Classified is no longer going to be a priority for me. I'm only going to pick up figures that I see or I'm going to order them online if they're a good deal and I have a little bit of extra cash and I'm going to be completely out on Hasbro Pulse exclusive figures and Comic-Con figures going forward. Up to this point, I had never really sold off that much of a single collection before. I've sold off a few figures here and there, but I never just sold off 20 plus figures from a collection. And I was always really worried that I would just feel like I would miss them and I would end up paying more to get them back. But I don't feel like that at all. I feel rejuvenated. I feel better that I have more space to dedicate to the things that I love more. And that's the awesome part about collecting is the way I feel about stuff changes. The way I feel about this room changes. It's always changing. It doesn't stay the same. I'm always moving stuff around. I'm always reorganizing in here. And again, it just keeps things from getting stale. It just keeps things exciting. And that's just what I love about this hobby is I love when it feels exciting. I love when it feels fun. And I just, I was getting to the point where it was more stress than fun. And I just wanted out of that. And I got out and I couldn't be happier about it. So I hope you guys enjoyed that video. Thank you for sticking around if you're still listening up to this point. Again, I don't know if I'm gonna edit this video on my phone or on the computer. It's probably gonna be a while before I'm doing things solely on the computer because Adobe Premiere Pro is the most complicated thing I've ever used before in my life. I have no idea what I'm doing and it's beyond complicated and it's not something you can just learn like that. So again, I'm doing some homework. I'm trying to figure stuff out. I've been trying to do as many updates on this computer as I can. Bear with me. Eventually, things are going to be bigger and better than ever. I promise you that. So thank you to all my subscribers. Thank you guys for sticking around. Thank you for liking my videos, commenting on the videos. Thank you to all the new subscribers. Welcome to the channel. I say this at the end of every video. Feel free to chime in with your two cents, even if it doesn't align with mine. Your opinion is always welcome here. I'm never going to block anything. I'm never going to delete anything. Even if it's super ignorant, I'll leave it up so people can see how stupid you are. I just might not respond to it. That's all I got for you guys in this one. So take it easy, be safe, and I'll catch you guys later. Peace. So it's very easy to see that not getting the Ghost Rider HasLab... So I've pretty much had no trouble scoring any of the Comic-Con exclusive figures, any of the Habro... I've never really had any trouble scoring any of the Comic-Con figures, any of the Habro... Why the fuck can I say Hasbro Pulse?